send out. Um, it's that time of year again. We have you take them home. We have you put your loose change. I don't. I know we're still in a coin shortage, maybe. You know, but some of you are hoarding all those coins. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, you can put them in those tins to go to missionaries, or hey, paper money still spins. So, but we take those. We have you bring them back in uh, uh, Christmas Eve service or thereafter, and uh, that all gets divvied up among our missionaries and. Uh, uh, we'll talk more about all that next week and everything, but uh, uh, just uh, ask God's blessings on that thing. It's always something special. It's definitely made me uh, look for a loose change and uh, change out in the world, uh, uh, you know, a little differently. So the other day I found 35 whole cents playing on the parking lot. I'm like, all right. So some missionaries get 35 cents, all right, at least. All right. Well, um, obviously you guys know, no surprise. Thanksgiving Thursday, right? Since 1621, people on this side of the globe, at least since 1621, have set aside a day, a special time, festivities, to celebrate a day of Thanksgiving, right? Um, and in that time, we've developed some traditions. Most of it's food-related, right? You're going to have Thanksgiving this week. And 90% of American households, if they have Thanksgiving, are going to have a turkey, right? You gotta have turkey. Turkey, stuffing, gravy, all that kind of stuff. You guys are gonna get hungry before I'm done with where I'm going on some of this today. Someone I work with, their family uh, uh, told them, they said, hey, you know what? Will you fix a turkey every year? We don't really like turkey. This is like after a number of years. We'd rather just have chicken. So they're like, no turkey? They're like, no, we just, can you fix some chicken? And so they're like, fine, they're gonna fix chicken. And so that went on a few days, and then the more and more they thought about it, they're like, we're still having turkey. So Myers ran their cell, they ran out and got a turkey, so they're having turkey and chicken, whether anybody eats the turkey or not. It's gonna be there, because it's just, it's part of Thanksgiving, right? You gotta have the turkey. Um, then there's gonna be the cranberry sauce. From a can, people. Whole or gel. Right? You can slice it, or I don't know how you like it. It doesn't matter. It's all good, good stuff. Right? Cranberry sauce, green bean casserole, right? Um, Isaac, he probably won't watch this, so I'm going to be safe, but he <laughs> called Rebecca the other day. They were having some kind of Friendsgiving get together. Um, I guess a secret Friendsgiving. <laughs> out in California, and he needed her to walk him through how to make green bean casserole, right? And so she was on the phone, she told me, like an hour. So any of you that made, you know how pretty simple it is, right? But it's easier than macaroni and cheese, I think. But anyway, so she got him through it. I think he survived. So one of his buddies, like, held a FaceTimed, you know, as she walked him through. Well, pumpkin pie. These are staples of Thanksgiving. And it's not just all about food. We, we gather together and we talk and we share stories. And, and we talk and share stories. And we talk and share stories and memories, right? And then we'll, we'll, we'll eat and talk and eat and talk and eat and talk. We'll stuff ourselves. And then we'll go to the recliner or sofa or whatever. And we'll drift off to a little bit of sleep. Think we can't eat anymore. And then we'll wait and say, hmm, I think I'm going to eat a little more. And we'll talk and eat and talk and eat some more, right? Some of you will get up that morning, you'll watch Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. <clears throat> that afternoon, you'll turn on the TV and you'll, you'll watch the Lions play football on Thanksgiving. You'll watch the Lions lose on Thanksgiving. It's tradition. It's Thanksgiving. There's just certain things we do. It's not just that you'll do those things, but you look forward to doing those things, right? You play it in your mind on how it's all going to play out, and you look forward to it. You look forward to the same things you've always done. It's tradition. We like it. It's Thanksgiving. Don't mess with our Thanksgiving. But this year, it's different, isn't it, a little bit? Thanksgiving has been messed with, right? 2020, COVID-19, the governor's request, I guess I should say, might be altering or changing what you're used to doing on Thanksgiving. 
So for many of you, not everybody's coming to Thanksgiving like you would normally have, right? I mean, we're, we're going through this ourselves. We normally are family gatherings at my in-laws. We have a huge gathering of a whole bunch of people. And guess what? Not everybody's going to come. Not everybody's going to make it. Actually, I hate to say this, it, it's canceled, <laughs> right? You might be missing some loved ones. Um, you aren't going to gather as you have in the past, maybe. If you are, don't tell me about it. That's fine. All right? We don't want a public record. <laughs> I was just telling I was telling a, a couple of Judy and others this morning, I was reading an article, the Spanish flu 1918, uh, as people were going through thanks, uh, Thanksgiving, um, it was in the second wave of the pandemic flu, which was worse than any of the first wave or the third wave that all hit. A lot of people, most during 1918, died during that second wave. But on Thanksgiving Day, even in areas of California, where it was very strict back in 1918, imagine that. Things don't change, people. But they literally had a burn your mask day in celebration of Thanksgiving, right? And then it got really bad after that. And so, but anyway, side note there. Your Thanksgiving may be just different if you wait too long for that turkey or ham or Whatever it is, you have some special ingredient. You may find it's not even at the store because of the COVID hoarding, right? I guess that's all starting back up again. They saw pictures on the internet of shelves of, once again, toilet paper gone and other things gone, you know, just wiped out. So again, your Thanksgiving might be a little different this year. Somebody I work with, I think this is genius. They, they normally have a big gathering. They're not doing that this year. So they have a drive-in Thanksgiving dinner plan. So what they told all of the family, extended family and friends, is this husband and wife, they're still going to cook the whole feast, and you're going to call them like you call a restaurant, and you're going to tell them what you want from the menu. And then you drive in the driveway, and it gets delivered to your window. So they still get the fun of preparing and all that. They still get to see you and wish you a happy Thanksgiving. And then you go drive off and eat it at home. All right? That's what they're doing. That's going to be different, but I think it'll be fun. It'll definitely be a 2020 story to tell. But what I'm getting at is this week might not turn out the way you hoped for, the way you had planned, the way that you've done it in the past, and you may find yourself this coming Thanksgiving trying to find Thanksgiving. That's what I'm calling this today, trying to find Thanksgiving. I'll give you a statement here. Listen real close. Thanksgiving does not happen to you. It is meant to come from you. Okay? Thanksgiving doesn't happen to you. It's meant to come from you. And listen, it's probably going to be for most of us in some way or other different. But I want you to really understand what it's supposed to be anyway, right? And we, we've all got it wrong. <laughs> Truth be told. And we'll get to that truth. Look at the verses here, Psalms 118. One of the most quoted psalms in all of Scripture. It said, don't have a way to know this, but many scholars think that when Jesus was on his way to the garden to be betrayed, that some of the verses in this psalm, he and the disciples sang as they were uh, about to experience all that. Psalms 118, verse 1, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let all who fear the Lord repeat, his faithful love endures forever. We, we have right there in that first verse, the whole, why we give thanks. He's good. His love endures forever. His love's faithful. It's not just that his love's faithful, but it endures forever. And again, God's good. You know, it's very possible that this year, I thought I've told you guys this over the course of years many times, Thanksgiving's my favorite holiday. I mean, obviously, I love Christmas. I love all those things. But Thanksgiving, that's just, I love it, as many of you do. It brings, there's a lot of nostalgic memories, a lot of things. We used to have big, massive 
gatherings at my grandmother's and people would come from all over uh, the states, you know, my mom's siblings and stuff. And I can tell you story after story. We just had just such a good a good time. It's just a lot of stories, a lot of jokes, a lot of pranks, all kinds of things that went on. And I, when I think of Thanksgiving, I have those memories in my mind. But again, you know, it's going to obviously be different this year. And, um, you know, I got to thinking, you know, this is just another thing in 2020. When you, when you think, you know, 2020 can't take another thing, it takes it. But at the same time, I think, you know, this is something that maybe God's allowed because, again, it's, it's stripping away what we're used to or what we've made something to be in order to see what it really should be, what it's really meant to be. And so, again, that's what I want to talk to you about today. Look at verse 24. This is going to kind of be our key verse today, a verse you guys are familiar with. We have talked many sermons about this, but Psalm 118, verse 24 says this. It says, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, God made today, right? You guys all know that. That's why you're here. He made today. God made this time. God made this week. God made this year. And God allowed 2020 to happen. Now, I'm not saying that for blame to him, but this is the day the Lord's made. This is the time the Lord's made. This is the year the Lord has made. This is the thanksgiving that the Lord has made and has given us to find true thanksgiving this year. So I want you to look at the first part of that verse. So this is the day the Lord has made. You and I, there's nothing you and I do with that first part of that verse. That's all on God. He's made that. This is the day the Lord has made. You guys didn't do anything about making today today. Right? You got up to experience the day the Lord has made. But the Lord, this is the day the Lord has made. Again, we're talking about more than just today, the time, the week, the year, all this stuff, the Thanksgiving. So that's a fact. First, first line there is just a fact. The second thing, however, there's a response. There's a, because of the fact, there's a reaction or an action on our part. We will rejoice and be glad on it. That's you and I. We, we do control that part of it. Again, you and I can't change the day. We didn't make it. We can't change what we can't change. That's out of our control, but we can rejoice and be glad in it that we do control it. So real Thanksgiving has to be more than memories and nostalgic traditions and things, doesn't it? You know, finding Thanksgiving is all about discovering whom to be thankful for and what to be thankful for. And no one, no man, no woman, no governor, no government entity can take that away. That can't be canceled in our cancel culture that we're experiencing. You know, it's oftentimes in adversity and hardship and persecution that we are put into a position to actually truly understand what really uh, thankfulness is about. Before the pilgrims had ever held that first Thanksgiving, history tells us they fell down and worshiped God. I'll back up just a second without just giving you a little bit of history. On the Sabbath day on the Mayflower throughout their journey, they celebrated the Lord's Day. <laughs> when they were, the Mayflower was actually there, uh, anchored and looking on the shore, they celebrated the Lord's Day that day before they ever went to land. Then when they went to land, one of the first things they did is recorded, it's historical fact, is they fell down on the, the ground and worshiped God in thankfulness and gratitude for getting them through that 66-day journey across the ocean that was horrific and awful. And none of us, you talk about a, a, a carnival cruise ride gone bad. <laughs> it was awful. If you, if you read about it, horrible, horrible. All of them crammed in one of the decks. 
just well, I, I mean they go into it. It just gross you out. It's horrible. They were thankful, <laughs> but it came as a result of adversity and hardship, right? And that first Thanksgiving, that there's debate, 1620, 1621, 1623, whenever it happened that all the paintings and everything are all about, it doesn't matter. It came from hard times. George Washington, 1777. The height of the Revolutionary War, Valley Forge, you've heard the stories how bad it was. The men, the cold winter, didn't even have shoes, were wrapping gauze around their feet and still losing toes and things to frostbite and all that stuff. He wrote this in the middle of that suffering when he himself thought something's going to change or we're losing this thing, right? He wrote this. He said, tomorrow being the day set apart by the Honorable Congress. Honorable Congress. When's the last time you've heard that? Right? <laughs> this is the Continental Congress. Let's bring back the Continental Congress, right? Congress. Tomorrow being the day set apart by the Honorable Congress for public thanksgiving and praise and duty, calling us devoutly to express our grateful acknowledgments to God for the manifold blessings he's granted us. Think about that. Think of the wars lost and his troops in disarray and despair. And George Washington still said, as a general at that time, we're going to give thanks to God for his blessings. Hardship. Adversity. Other presidents that followed failed to keep the Thanksgiving tradition. And then in 1863... In the ravages of the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln, president, then took a proclamation that not General George Washington had put in place, but President George Washington had put into place because the other presidents had just foregone, for when it, for when, foregone, forego, <laughs> they for something to it. <laughs> <laughs> they let it go away. He brought it back. It wasn't actually Lincoln's actual. He brought back George Washington's proclamation when he was president. But he added, it will be an official day. And again, Thanksgiving came again. Again, during the middle of the Civil War. That second part of verse 24 we will rejoice and be glad of it. Listen, the fact that this is the day, the week, the year, the Thanksgiving that the Lord has given us, we have to understand that, that there's an action need on our part, and that's to rejoice and to be glad. We have to choose to rejoice and choose to be glad. That word rejoice, it means show great joy or delight. Let me give you a couple of verses. Uh, Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Romans 12, 12, rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. We're to rejoice. We're to be glad. Be glad, just pleased, happy. You know people in your life that they don't choose to be glad, they actually choose to be miserable? Have you met those people? Yeah. They're just always miserable. It's like, my word, you're just always grumpy. What's the deal? Why are you like that? I hate miserable people. I'm telling you, it's like a pet peeve. I'm sure it's you, you too. I hate grumpy for no reason, you know? I can get grumpy, but at least I think I have a reason. <laughs> My wife may differ on that. <laughs> and I think she does. <laughs> Don't be miserable. Be happy. Psalms 32, 11. Just listen. Rejoice in the Lord. Be glad. You righteous. Sing all you who are upright in heart. This is the day the Lord's made. Causes us to act. We will. You get that? We will. That's a choice. You have to act. You don't just wake up and are happy. You don't just wake up and rejoice. 
You have to make the choice to do that. And some of you, and you start, that's, you know, the start of your day determines everything. Some of you wake up and you think you're not in a good mood, but you've chosen to be there. Choose to rejoice and be happy. It'll change things. We will rejoice and be glad in it. That, that often gets overlooked, that little in it, in what? The day the Lord has made. So today, you should rejoice and be happy because you are in the day he's made. And this week, God willing, he allows you and I to go through this week and live and Thanksgiving still happens. <laughs> Get up and rejoice and be glad in it. You may not have everybody around your table. I'm sorry. I'm not going to have everybody that I love around my table. Right? I'm going to be happy. I'm going to rejoice. I'm cooking turkey anyway. <laughs> right? I'm watching the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving special at some point anyway. <laughs> Choose to be happy, just predetermined, not just Thanksgiving, but every day. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to choose to be happy. Yeah, maybe the day before wasn't great. Maybe work didn't go as well as I wanted, or school, or whatever it is, or there's problems. Yes, there's all that stuff, but still you can choose to rejoice and be glad in it, the day the Lord has made. Look at the rest of that psalm, Psalm 118. Let me reread verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Verse 4, let all who fear the Lord repeat, his faithful love endures forever. And then verse 25, please, Lord, please save us. Please, Lord, please give us success. Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God shining upon us. Take the sacrifice and bind it with cords on the altar. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. There's a lot of reasons in that Psalms 118 for you to choose to rejoice and be glad in the day the Lord has made. If you have a hard time remembering, you go back and read all the things that you can be thankful to God for. You can find thanks in any circumstance when you remember who it is you're to be thankful for. Right? And again, for the believer, how bad, how bad can it possibly get? Because as bad as this could get the world, this life... The other day the Lord has made, the day of the Lord that will come, you'll be in heaven with him. Right? And it'll be awesome and great. Give thanks to the Lord, for he's good. His faithful love endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Choose to rejoice and be glad. All right? Now listen, we're going to transition communion and really this shows you exactly um, all about that faithful love right I mean that whole thing that Christ did for us this again is symbolic of him showing that love to us that God gave his son as a sacrifice taking our place Again, showing us how his love indeed for us does endure faithfully forever. The bread will represent Jesus' body that was beaten and sacrificed to take your place. And obviously, the cup represents the blood that was shed for you and I, washing away the sins of all who accept his sacrifice. Let me read you just some verses. won't be up here, but just listen. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. Every time you eat this bread, drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. We've talked about this many times. This is symbolic. This, uh, uh, this communion does not save you, 
This is, we do this in remembrance of what Christ did for us. It's the constant reminder of us what he did for us. And so also in scripture, we're warned though that we have to be careful when we do this, that, that it's done in the right manner in that um, we're supposed to self-examine ourselves. So let me read you this scripture. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 through 31, so anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. That's why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you're eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. That's why many of you are weak and sick and some have even died. But if we would examine ourselves, we would not be judged by God in this way. I, I, say it, I, I tell this every time we, we observe this, that you and I are completely unworthy. Only by God's grace and mercy that is shed upon us by his blood that was sacrificed for us, his body, can we partake in this. The accepting Christ for salvation, that's what makes us worthy. Because when we stand before God, we're, we're standing before God as Christ, as the mediator, right, on our behalf. And so that's what makes us worthy. But what the scripture is talking about, what's instructed here is, listen, you can't come into this with, with sin and these things in your life and, and, and not have a check, right? You can't just do it in the sense of you take this and, and God's really saying that you're diminishing it. You're, you're taking it for granted. You're treating it as, as an un, unholy type of thing. And this is a very sacred thing in his eyes because, again, this represents what his son does. And he took that very seriously, right? Because he gave his son to us. So we're supposed to take a, a moment of time and just, listen, you want to just pray and just say, God, is there is there sin in my life? If there is, then let me confess it before you. Are you and me on speaking terms, right? And if there's something that's in your way, then again, confess it before him so that you can do this thing worthily. And uh, he wants you to. That's why he says, do this self-examination. I want you to partake of this, but I want you to check in with me and make sure we're good. Right. So let's just take this moment and uh, let's again just have a time of self-examination and prayer. Others and come before you, God. We just, God, we want to take this time to examine ourselves, our lives, dear God. God, if there's hidden sin, unconfessed sin, that God, we'd allow your spirit to bring it to light. That God, we confess it before you, knowing that God, that if we confess it to you, that God, you're faithful and just to forgive us our sin, cleanse us of all unrighteousness, your word says. God, you tell us in your scripture that we just read that if we would examine ourselves, and confess that before you, dear God, that God, we'd not be judged in that way, dear God, again, of, of receiving this unworthily. God, we, we want to be worthy to receive it. God, I pray you'd be upon these people that are partaking in this, dear God, that again, they've, God, come before you. Acknowledge you. Confess any sin. And God, had you make it right. We love you and we thank you and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now normally we pass the cup and bread out. You know, we've got our little COVID <laughs> communion, right? So that if you can find that top layer there, I know it's a little difficult, but pull that little wafer of bread out, unleavened bread. Let me read a verse, and then we'll take of that. It says, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24, 
and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then again on your little second layer there. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. So listen, before we sing today, tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thanksgiving, and any day after that, that God allows you to have breath in this place, it will be the day the Lord has made. Choose to rejoice and be glad because he's God and his faithful love endures forever. Let's all stand. Let's sing our last song. <clears throat>